Hello friends, welcome to the video tutorial of C programming and in this video we are going to study one more concept related to one dimensional array. Here we are going to study how to allocate a memory for array dynamically. Till now whenever we declare array what happens? See, let me write one declaration statement here. So int x of 50. What happens whenever you define the size? A 50 memory location of type integer get allocated means assume that one integer acquires two bytes of memory and 2 into 50 is equal to what 100 bytes memory get allocated and this memory is allocated at compile time remember this thing whenever you declare any variable memory will be allocated at compile time only okay Whereas dynamic memory allocation means what? Memory get allocated at runtime. Memory get allocated at runtime. So actually what we are going to study how to allocate a memory for one dimensional array at runtime which is nothing but what? Dynamic memory allocation. Now you, may, you might say that what is the disadvantage of this method? Why it is necessary to allocate a memory dynamically? Right? Basically, see whenever we declare an array of maximum size, see first of all we declare the array of fixed size, say of size 5, of size 10. But then we found that user may need to specify his own requirement. So at that time what we decided? We decided to declare our array of maximum size. Now suppose just assume that user only used 10 locations of this user only use 10 location of this so 40 locations get west 40 locations get west means 80 bytes memory get west and you use only 10 location you use only 20 bytes so this 40 location or 8 bytes of memory is unnecessary acquired by your program okay it get released when your program will terminate now suppose if you specified 50 and at runtime user requires something 70 memory location then what happened at runtime you cannot increase this value okay this is very static declaration at runtime you cannot specify this statement means suppose you might as uh, you might say that I will scan the value of n and then I'll say int x of n okay you might say this but this array declaration is invalid this array declaration is what totally invalid so remember this thing we have whenever we declare array we have to specify the size and it should be in the form of at least constant so you can say it is in symbolic constant or literal constant but it should be a constant value only so I hope you got this so we just identified the drawbacks of static declaration of an array okay that's why we need dynamic memory allocation so according to the user requirement we will allocate only that much memory required by the user so there will be no wastage and as well as there will be no shortage of a memory location okay so let us see the functionality made available by the C for dynamic memory allocation so let us switch to next page so malloc function is used for that purpose which function is used malloc function is used to allocate a memory dynamically so let us see the syntax of it so what you have to say malloc then you have to specify the number of bytes it's basically you what you will specify how many bytes of memory you want to allocate okay and what it returns it returns actually void pointer what it returns it returns void pointer so let us take on one example say void star p so I declare one pointer variable and then say p is equal to malloc say I said allocate 10 bytes of memory okay now what it does it will allocate 10 bytes of memory so on okay and whatever memory allocated 
its base address assume that its base base address is 1000 it gets stored in variable p it gets stored in variable p because here we specified that or we collected it in p variable and we know the pointer arithmetic now this all these memory locations are contiguous continuous you can move on to the next location by incrementing the pointer by 1 or adding 1 to p and so on okay now see basically we saw uh, void keyword but when we used it whenever we do not want to return any value in that case we used it along with a function okay but you can have a pointer variable of type void and it is also called as generic pointer what is it called as generic pointer now a generic pointer means generic pointer means a pointer which can hold the address of any type of variable generic pointer means what a pointer variable that stores the address of any type now of any type means what it can store the address of integer type of variable it can store the address of float type of variable it can store the address of long in type of variable and so on okay so that is called a generic pointer so void void pointer data type is available for the pointer variables only it is not available for normal value variable value variable okay now as i told you i want to allocate a value for an array say i want to allocate a value for an integer type of array okay so how many bytes of memory integer requires integer requires two bytes of memory okay according to 32 bit machines it requires two bytes of memory and how many for how many array element i want to allocate a memory i want to allocate a memory for n array element so what will i say 2 into n then i'll collect it in integer type of pointer okay so i'll say px px is equal to malloc 2 into n okay but just now we studied that malloc function returns the address of type what it returns the address of type what void and here we are collecting it in an integer type of pointer variable so we need to typecast it we need to typecast void pointer to the integer pointer because void pointer is a generic pointer it can store the address of any any other type of variable but integer pointer can store the address of integer type of variable only so let us do the typecasting i already explained the process of typecasting so here i am just going to write that statement only so px is equal to int star okay so this will be our proper function okay basically function is only this much okay this is the only function but according to our requirement what we did we did modification in it okay so we specified the n values n values are of type integer that's why we specified we multiplied it by 2 and since we are getting integer type of address and again I want to store it in integer type of variable right so I have to typecast it so this is typecasting part now again we are not sure whether on which machine my program is going to be run if it runs on 32 bit then it will acquire 2 bytes integer will acquire 2 bytes on 32 bit machine whereas on 64 bit machine integer will acquire what 4 bytes of memory so again if you write 2 statically okay if you provide 2 as a constant value so definitely it will give you a problem okay so again let us make it more generalized so px is equal to int star here what we specified convert it into the integer pointer see before this also we wrote, we we did a type casting at that time we used to say only data type okay on in, convert it into the integer variable convert it into the float variable but here we want to convert it into the integer address 
and we know the declaration of pointer for pointer what we have to say we have to use a normal data type only and after that we have to put a asterisk sign so this means convert it into the integer pointer variable then say malloc okay and here you will use size of operator we already studied this operator and i'll update the link of it in the description below okay so if you have any doubt you can watch both the videos related to the type casting operator and size of operator now what actually size of operator does it will gives you the memory requirement of your data type okay according to your machine so if my machine is 64 bit the size of operator will gives me 4 whereas if my machine is 32 bit the size of operator will gives me 2 okay so this syntax you have to follow okay now what happen so consider that the value of n is 3 so three memory locations are allocated okay and the address is something 2000 2002 i'm considering that my machine is 32 bit so that's why i'm incrementing it by Two and the px will point to this memory location. Where px will point? Px will point to the base address, beginning location, first location. Okay. So let us write one simple program based on this. Let me switch to the next page. Now, here what we are going to do? We are we are going to calculate the sum of array element. What we are going to do? sum of array elements but using dynamic memory allocation using dynamic memory allocation so let me make a partition here okay now here first of all void main okay then you are going to declare one pointer variable because you are allocating a memory at run time and you are going to store that address so to hold the address we need one pointer variable okay now let me declare few variables we are going to accept the value of n from user okay how many elements for how many elements you want to allocate a memory now to iterate through a loop i need variable i and we need variable sum also to store the sum of array elements okay now what is the first step accept the value of n so for that let me give the message so print f enter size or enter number of elements you can specify any message then here i'll say scan f percent d m percent n okay so i accepted the value of n from the user now next step is to allocate a memory dynamically and store the address in variable p okay so i have to type cast it in star or in asterisk malloc size of int into n okay so it will allocate a memory something like this so as you can see here it will allocate a memory something like this if i consider the value of n as 5 okay so initially you do not have any data in it it will have a garbage value so that's why i do not write anything here okay now what is the next step you have to scan the values for this memory location so how many values you have how many memory locations you are located you are located n memory location and you have the base address in your variable p so what you will do you will increment p by 1 okay you will increment p by 1 or what you will do you will add 1 0 1 2 p till it reaches to n so that will be a better logic okay so here i'll say for i is equal to 0 i is less than n and i plus plus now what i can say i can say p plus i p plus i or p plus 0 p plus 1 p plus 2 this will gives me the 
next consecutive location and for this we created one general statement that is p plus i and this i will range from 0 to less than n okay now here again you will display one message to the user that is printf enter element okay i'm not going to write it here now i'm going to scan this value actually i'm going to scan the value now remember this thing now percent d I know that my addresses are of type. I, I allocated a value for integer data. So definitely I have to take an input as an integer only. Okay. Now, see, your address is already there in P. You will not say n percent P now. What you will say? You will say just P plus I. Initially value of I is what? 0. So 2000 plus 0 is what? 2000. So whatever value you have scanned it goes at 2000 location so you scan 2 next time when i value will be 1 p plus 1 is what p is what 2000 p plus 1 2000 plus 1 is what actually it is 2001 but since our pointer is of type integer it get incremented by 2 so p 2000 plus 1 is what 2002 so whatever value you will scan it goes at 2002 location okay see whenever you write a scanf statement what you say you say percent d and percent n so when you use ampersand here what is the meaning of this part you are specifying the address of your variable n here you already have it the address directly so you need not to use ampersand here okay so i hope you got this now once i got the first element what will i do I'll directly say sum is equal to sum plus okay please keep a gap between this to understand it or for the readability star of p plus i okay so star of p plus i means what what is the value at p plus i location when i is 0 what is the value at p plus i location it is 2 so it get added to sum and again the same result gets stored in sum and after that after processing of it n, num n number of times you will print the value of sum okay so i hope you understand this okay so let us execute it, uh, this part in code block so as you can see here i declared the required variable that is one pointer variable i to iterate through loop n to store the number of element and sum to hold the sum of array element then in the next two statements i just displayed the message and i scan the value of n and then using malloc function i allocated a memory for n elements of an array of type integer and then i type casted it and then stored it in variable p now using next for loop we accepted the value and we stored it in p of i location and using indirection operator we fetch the value from an from an array location and then we added it to the sum and we store the result in sum again because we want a final sum of our array element so last statement will print the sum of a array element so let us execute it so say i want to allocate a memory for five elements let's say one two three four five okay so sum of one two five number is what 15 so it is working fine okay so you can write any program that we studied till now using this dynamic memory allocation just you know how to scan the values now okay and how to fetch a value at array location so asterisk or star of p plus i so before this what you used to say you say x of i you use square bracket or p of i whatever but here you will say star of p plus i that is the only change otherwise pointers are very easy for one dimensional array definitely you should have a basic knowledge of a pointer so again i'll request you if you are not aware of the pointer please watch the pointers basics in c programming video i already uploaded that thank you